We've had a rainy week at home, but that doesn't matter today. Today I'm on a special trip out and I'm here in Yorkshire at Yorkshire Chris's Exotic Garden. I know most of you will have seen Chris's videos over the years. It's got all kinds of different exotic gardening content, but today it's my first time visiting the garden in person. It's been really surreal seeing it, walking around the garden. And as we grow a lot of the same kind of plants, it's been fascinating seeing which ones do really well for him and how he's chosen to design his similar layout garden to mine. So it really is incredible walking around here and some of the specimens, the Jubea in particular, you really need to see it. I'm sure you'll love this. My video is a tour around his garden, talking about some of the most amazing plants here. But over on Chris's channel, I'll link to this in the description below, we've done a Q&A video together, answering a lot of your tropical style and exotic garden questions. So after you've seen this video, check out Chris's and I hope you enjoy both. So anyway, let's get on with the tour. So, how's it going Chris? It's going well George. Yeah. It's, uh, we've had a few uh, rainy storms recently, so the garden's uh, it's looking lush but it's looking a bit, bit dishevelled in places. Oh. Um, but we'll have a look around and see what you think. Definitely. Well, thanks for having me around and I've got to say, the first thing that I saw, well obviously because it's the first thing here, just how amazing these canners look. These are moves of foliar, aren't they? These ones they here. They are, yes, they are, yeah, yeah. I've got to say that's probably my favourite canner just for the sheer size of them. I just think it's mad that you can get something like that just in one season. I think so. I mean, sometimes I've, I've lifted these um, in the past just to make sure that I've got some backup stock whilst keeping most planted out. Uh, but last winter everything stayed out so yeah. all the canners stayed out and because we had all that heat you know early in the season really from yeah. sort of may and june and then the proper heat in july and august it definitely got things going they got it? them going and got them up to full height really really quickly and you know we we might if we, if it carries on being half decent into october we might even get the odd flower on the that would be cool I've seen a couple on Facebook where they're flowered and they're like really dark red flowers and yeah, bright red. Yeah, so. I mean, it is, obviously, it's a foliage why we grow this, yeah. uh, the canna, because it's the banana leaved canna, so it's they've got the huge paddle like leaves. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's done really well this year. And the, as you know, it bulks up so quickly that you get loads and loads of plants if you divide it as well. No, they're definitely a strong grower. So, I should probably back up a minute, really. I've come around to your garden and this is the first thing that you see. And the canners, they really jumped out at me over there. But the other thing is these bamboos, the Barinda papyrifera. Yeah. Uh, I've only got small ones of these, but I've got to say yours are definitely some of the best ones I've seen. Just yeah. how blue they are. They're really blue. The new culms that come through each uh, summer, they are, as you can see, pretty much sort of vibrant bright blue with that sheen of white powder over the top. And this particular plant we're looking at now is yeah. a division from the mother plant, which, which is on is the, this one over here. Over here, and that was done about four years ago. That yeah. division, and it was only about two sort of two canes that are divided off this main plant. And at the time, it was surprising how dry the soil was under yeah. there. You know, it gets watered well. The mother plant here is not as vibrant blue because most of the new growth is actually going away from where out, you can out see, the garden. Yeah. away from this area. So the, what you see there is the older culms. Compared to this one, the new newer division, this is all this year's growth and it's growing yeah. in bright sunlight here. So it keeps its colour looking really good for about, about a year or so before it sort of goes like an olive green colour once yeah. the, uh, the blueness washes off. So this is obviously the first part of your garden you see when you enter and it's just basically a huge wall of colour isn't it? You've got a mixture of cannas, bamboos. Is it really a case of the plants that you enjoy looking at the best or is it just a mixture that came to you? Yeah so this area is where I put probably the most effort in to be honest in terms of having the big leaf plants like the cannas and the bananas and the bamboos but also mm. the smaller lower ground colourful plants that yeah. will grow from seed and cuttings. So it gets, it gets pretty good sun here and it's quite sheltered as well, so the big leaves don't tear too much, yeah, and yeah. the flowers uh, last a bit longer here as well. So I like to put yeah a lot of attention this first part of the garden, so you have good impact as soon as you walk. Definitely, the corner. and I suppose that's why you've gone for the the Canamusifolia, the Berinda, really bright plants, good strong growers. Yeah. You, you see them and they just look incredible, don't they? Yeah, and the good doers. I mean, they don't yeah. take much effort once you've got them planted. You know the bamboos look after themselves and the cannas you can leave in in the ground over winter and they'll come back year after year yeah I and mean, it's really benefited this year because we've had you know a really hot start to the year and it continued yeah. being really hot and the the cannas got big quickly 
Definitely. Um, sometimes, you know, if you've lifted them or you've grown them in pots in the greenhouse, you can have big plants to start the season. Yeah. Whereas ones left in the ground can be really slow to start. They really need that kick of heat, don't they? This year, going? this year they just got really big straight away, which is great. Definitely. And then over this side, you've got the strong evergreens, trachycarpus. I know that's a feature plant in your garden, just repeated, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people say all the trachycarpus species look the same. And, Ooh, uh, there's, controversial. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's definitely a case for that in for a lot of them. Yeah. You know, this is one that's trachycarpus uh, common, which is thought to be to kill for a while, but it's not to kill. Yeah. Um, and it adds like the farm of this one, especially. Oh, yeah. And it does show you can move pounds about. So this was in a different yeah. part of the garden and then replanted here about five years ago and it's continued to grow and it's uh, looking pretty good now. That's sort of what I sort of follow myself really. When it comes to these plants, it's not just growing them to tick them off a list. It's choosing the best ones, the strongest growers. And you just want to look at good, strong plants, don't you? You go yeah. around your garden and that one, it looks really healthy, doesn't it? It does. I mean, it benefits from shelter from the bamboos and the other yeah. plants behind it as well. So. You do get wind at the moment shredding the leaves in this area. It's pretty sheltered. Yeah. So everything does look pretty good. And actually this year we've not until recently really had any big storms or anything no, we've been lucky, to, to we? blow through the garden. So even the bananas on this side and the cannas, the leaves are still looking pretty good saying we're, you know, well into September now. Definitely. And um, which can is this one here, the flowering one? So we've got Cleopatra. So yeah. the flowers are always different. You might get the, the red, the orange, or the, the or the speckled flowers as well. Yeah. And then on, yeah, underneath you can see the nice variegated leaves. That's a lovely thing. And then heading round, we've got Spanish flag. Spanish flag. So I like to plant that everywhere really and let it do its thing and climb up the plant. So it looks good with the bamboos. It climbs naturally up the canes. But as you'll see, it mingles in with other plants. It'll climb yeah. up gingers, it'll climb up the cannas, it'll just go everywhere. So you'll just see it popping up as you walk around and the garden. Presumably you just grow that sort of mid-spring inside in a yeah, greenhouse? Yeah, from seed every sort of April, I'll put the seeds in, germinate pretty quickly and then plant it out in May. Yeah, yeah. No, it look, definitely fits in, very colourful. But obviously talk about colour, you can't not talk about these dahlias here, can you? Yeah, I mean the dahlias have done really well this year. And what I found is actually everything flowered a lot earlier this year. Yeah. So I had a big flush of flowers sort of early July this year. And all these, every single daily here was left in the ground. So everything has come up. Yeah. Like you didn't see anything until sort of end of April. And then it came up in May and then started flowering in June and then looking amazing by July. And, you know, as we're in September now, this is like the second, third, fourth flush of, of flowers and it's still got a bit of colour for this this time of year. I mean, one question for you is, would you usually leave all these plants in the ground every year? Or is it just a case of efficiency, we'll call it, rather than laziness? Is it just a <laughs> rolling the dice, see what happens? Yeah, I think because I like to, you know, I don't want to lift so much, it's taking too much time. I like yeah. to, obviously things that are, are properly tender, like the onsets, will get lifted every year. The dailies and the canners I've found, I can leave most out. To be honest, I can leave all of them out, and I would say nine years out of ten, they'll all come back. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes, like the, the Cleopatra canners, which we've just looked at, I've lifted those before, because I found them a bit slow to get going. Yeah, yeah. But last year, you know, they all stayed out and have all come back really well, so I probably will leave everything out, um, so that I'm not putting too much in the greenhouse over winter. To me, it's one of the things about like this whole tropical style exotic gardening. When you look at it, you just see all the coloured big leaves, and it's sort of. I guess you might think it's hard to achieve the effect, but in reality, it is a mixture of plants that you can just leave outside. They just do the thing every year. Then you maybe have a couple of key plants like the bananas, um, and then the riceness that you put in in yeah mid to late spring, and they yeah. really sort of complete the picture. But yeah, I mean dahlias, single dahlias as well. They're great for butterflies, pollinators. Exactly, yeah. A lot of people think you don't get too much wildlife in a, an exotic garden. And that could be the case if you literally just went for foliage and nothing else. But I like to mix in sort of the annual yeah. annual flowers and also the returning plants like the dahlias for that, for that sort of uh, nectar sauce. So, you Definitely. know, the butterflies love it as well as the All bees right. and the hoverflies. I can see the bees around today, even on an overcast September day. Yeah, they're still they're about. Still loving it. Got a few, Excellent. A few butterflies hanging about still as well, which is good to see. So let's head around a little bit more. Now, this here is a plant I'm not massively familiar with myself. 
but can you yeah, tell us more about Yeah, so it? as you'll see, we've got quite a lot of these popping up and these are suckers from the main plants. This is uh, Clarodendron and Bungiae and the main plants of intermingled with that Trachycarpus leaves and the bamboo at the back and it stayed pretty much as a shrub like that for about, well, six, seven years now in that corner. Mm. But this spring, it's decided to come up everywhere. And just pop up And literally, we have about a dozen yeah. all over this area. But I think it, it works well that are coming up. I quite like the flowers. Oh, the flowers are definitely Butterflies nice. love these flowers. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, um, as good as buddleias for, for, for butterflies. And the leaves are nice, and they just give a bit of interest, because they've got like purple, purple on the um, yeah. on the petioles and the stems here, which go well with some of the other sort of flowers and colours in the garden. I know a lot of people are quite wary of you know invasive plants, plants yeah. that spread, but I think a lot of them in reality they're quite easily controlled, other than maybe your big bamboos. Yeah. And with a sort of display like this, where they pop up, they fit in really well, I think. The yeah. big leaves, are, they're blending well, and I guess it's something you want to stay on top of, but equally you've got to let plants do the thing to a certain extent, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, it adds to the more sort of jungly area, this, it, yeah. it looking a bit more natural, sort of, rather than you planting it and having it dotting ever about it, yeah. it's doing what it wants, where it wants. Yeah, it just works, um, doesn't it? And, I mean, I might take up a few of these, cause I don't want to spread on the entire garden, no, but no, I no, think, no. as it is this year, it's uh, looking good in this area. And something we both talked about in our videos, that good, hardy, evergreen backdrop of plants there. So you've got different factors, haven't you? You've got a bamboo. Yeah. Is that uh, Robusta, that one, Fagesia Robusta? We've got Fagesia Robusta, which yep. is basically I'm using as hedging a yep. border plant uh, for next between us and next doors. It's a really tough bamboo, isn't it? Good, strong grow where it takes any amount of weather, really, yeah, doesn't it? it Sun, does. wind, and snow. And it stays pretty upright as well. Yeah. Even if you had a, I mean, we had a big storm last night, and it's not sort of towered over like some Phyllostachys do. It's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. stayed upright and it's, uh, it's still looking good and it looks good all year round. Nice one. And this banana here? Yeah, I got the Musa sicamensis, which um, I know a lot of people say it's hardy and it can be hardy-ish, but I find I've had them in the past, left them out and have died very yeah. early on, even before Christmas time. So I lift this one. Yeah. So this is one of the plants I do lift. And it's put out, you know, it's put out a good head of leaves this year and they've not been ripped to shreds too much because it's got that protection from the bamboo next to it as well. Yeah, it, it looks good, definitely. And speaking of big jungly plants, this ginger looks awesome. I'll just yeah. pass, pass it and look back at it. fight through it and we've yeah. got the uh, Hedicium forestii, which I've got planted throughout yeah. the garden. And this always normally flowers for me right at the end of August, literally yeah. the last few days of August and then all the way through September. This year, because of the hot weather, it actually yeah. did start flowering in the end of July, so like a full month wow. earlier. And it's still continuing flowering now. And it's right through the garden, really robust plant. It's a real stunner, I've got to say. It, it just looks so, yeah, it's got so much that volume there, I guess, really. I mean, it's a little bit taller than you, and you're about eight foot tall, aren't you? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, pretty and much, yeah. Nearly as tall as you, yeah. Flowers, on, yeah, flowers on every single stem. Yeah. I, yeah. I know I, I grow a lot of uh, garden arianum at home, and a yeah. couple of the sorts, but I've got to say, this Forestii is definitely one I need to try. It's just definitely. such an impressive looking plant, definitely. Yeah, so easy to look after. It doesn't need protecting at all in winter. It's really, really hard, and it just yeah. quickly comes back in spring as Which well. Which is a big thing for gingers, yeah, isn't it? Because a lot of them tend to wait till right at the back end, don't a they? A lot you don't see until the end of June. Um, yeah. And this comes up sort of end of April, and then it's at full height by July. That's so, awesome, Which that. is really good. Definitely. And then you got that with a backdrop of all the bananas there. Yeah, I got them set. The Anibas Anibas at the Anibas, back, yeah, so they've they've done well. Yeah. And they add, you know, obviously the height and the contrast with the riciness in front yeah. as well. And they don't shred, so the leaves stay like that. They're quite tough compared to the Musa leaves. And I know when I think of Haniba, it's your garden that I think of because not many people grew them until a few years back and then a couple of brave people propagated them, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, and I a, did, yeah, I decapitated one, yeah. quartered it, and they ended up with like a hundred plants which have basically retired spread off. about well retired yeah, off spread around the country and yeah. then it's you know there wasn't many of us doing that so yeah yeah well, i would say probably about half or three quarters of everybody's hanebas came from this garden yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> and they are certainly a cool plant to grow so let's head through a little bit more sure, yeah now this is a plant i just want to focus on the plants that really jump out at me the cool ones some i grow and then some that i've seen but would like to grow this sheffler this is just an awesome thing Mine's not great, but tell me a bit about your plant. So this 
uh, Sheffra macrophylla is done surprisingly well because a lot of people think it's a tender plant yeah. and even people you know on the south coast won't plant this out thinking yeah. it's too tender but this has survived several winters here and i got it from a garden somewhere else in in the bradford area and it was much higher elevation and yeah, it yeah. survived colder winters there all oh, right that's interesting and then it was know. planted here and even through the beast from the east it didn't it didn't defoliate at all and it's just continued growing i mean it is sheltered again mm -hmm. by the bamboos and things but it puts out a new flush of leaves every spring and just continues putting out new leaves even you know at the yeah. end of the year as well I know it's, it's one of those plants that's not widely available, is it? There's only a couple of sellers you yeah. can actually get it from. Um, there's Creek Farm plants. And I keep seeing figures of about minus six being touted about with yeah. its absolute limit, but yeah. your sort's great. You see minus six here, don't yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. Not maybe this past winter, but the year, winter before. This has had minus seven on several occasions. Wow. And it's not died, so. No, but it looks a bit rough, doesn't it, when it sees it? It droops a bit, like all it droops, do. Yeah, but, and, but even the fanciers, when they're fully oh, yeah. frozen through they look like they might not, not make it but they always the perk yeah. up when they defrost basically nice. but yeah it's doing well definitely an awesome plant and, and it's got the biggest leaves i think of any sheffler that we can grow yeah that's what the dogs say next door yeah. isn't it <laughs> it's definitely one of those plants you wouldn't say it's conventionally beautiful but it's certainly an awesome thing to have yeah. here yeah something really striking and it definitely. looks great with the low quad as well <laughs> yeah the green so, tree but yeah the low quad have grown here because I want it in a little bit more shade so that the leaves grow bigger because you can grow it in full sun but the yeah. leaves won't grow as big. So I like to have it here so that the leaves will get bigger over time as well. I mean it won't fruit probably in this location no. but it's the leaves is yeah, why yeah. I grow it. No, it's a striking thing. And Gunra, this is obviously a plant that both of us grow. Yeah, Yours yeah, has got yeah. some big leaves but yeah. I imagine this one's been affected by your hosepipe ban. The hosepipe yeah. ban, the drought, I mean the heat the gunners although they come from you know warmer climes than here they yeah. they don't like it when it's really no. really hot and dry so it did suffer when we nearly got to 40 degrees earlier oh, no, in the year definitely it's not the sort of temperatures they like is it so you see a bit of a uh, yeah. shriveling on the end of well, leaves up there to be honest mine's doing exactly the same and it is something i get questions about on my channel you know i grow my gunner in a big pot blah 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 yeah the leaves are going brown what can i do and i think even when the plants in the ground somewhere like this you're still going to have a bit of crisping they're just they don't like the extremes of temperatures and i guess even in the natural habitat they still naturally go brown anyway won't they ultimately yes, lower yeah, down exactly um, i mean obviously this isn't grown as a marginal it's not in a yeah. pond it's not in particularly wet ground no but it does as you can see push out big leaves yeah yeah no definitely a cool plant for sure and looking at oversized plants your miscanthus giganteus is it that one there yes that's yes. definitely grown a lot better than mine yeah but it's um it's one i've had for many years now and divided many times and about four or five years ago i put a row in here and every single year it gets to like whatever it's three meters tall something like that and you know we'll it flowers later on in the year but it's, mm. it's the leaves that we grow it for it's probably even more than three meters isn't it Look at uh, that. probably yeah yeah in, in mark goodlad's uh, height measurements that's about eight meters tall uh, that. probably so yeah if yeah. you listen to yeah. this mark i know your game <laughs> we'll head through past the jungle hut and i've got to say this is something my garden's definitely missing which is the sound of water which the dog absolutely loves <laughs> Yeah, the water, I mean, some people think, is it a stream coming from, you know, yeah. over there, but it isn't. It's just a circulating pump yeah. round here, but I did all the rocks in, and so give that bit of a, a natural looking feel. Yeah. And I like the sound of the water wherever you are in the garden. Definitely. It, it, does, it certainly looks natural. It, even this side, I know when we had a quick walk around earlier, you said it's not heavily maintained shall we say no this but it area still looks really yeah. natural doesn't it? i mean what's this plant here crawling over everything so we've got a mullenbeck here here this is a large leaf form it's normally very tiny yeah. leaves and it, it's a spreader as in as in it intermingles between other plants but it doesn't have like the little suckers that ivy does to attach the plants it yeah. just sort of sprawls over everything and you can contain it but i've just let it go wild all over oh. the, the fences and through the plants it, in this area it looks good it's definitely similar sort of style to myself i know a lot of people they like to have plants looking pristine you know everything with its own space but personally the bit that excites me is when you have that sort of element of natural planting in there you know plants yeah. sort of spilling over each other you know getting mixing up getting involved i think yeah. it looks really natural and wherever you've got water it just looks right at yeah. end, doesn't it i mean to be honest because we've got the huge lethal yucca there yeah 
and we've got a pond, it's literally impossible to get around this area and do a bit of weeding. So there's tide, a you know. so this, is, well, yeah. this is wild gardening, this bit. This just gets on with it and I don't do any maintenance whatsoever with no. that bed at all. It, it looks good to me. And these palms here? Yeah, they're we've got the Trachycarpus princeps, yeah. the true species. And these have been in quite a few years now. And they've got, you know, they've got a decent trunk starting on those as well. Proper yeah, yeah. bluish white underneath the leaves. And yeah, they're just gonna get on with it and hopefully one day be towering palms above this area. Excellent. And speaking of towering palms, I think probably my favorite plant in your garden without a doubt has got to be this beauty here. Yeah, so we've got the big jabea. This was like probably the biggest plant I've brought to the garden. Yep. I had to haul it all the way down, plonk it in this area. And you know, it's been in nine years now and it's probably Quite hard to say, but I would say it's at least doubled in size in terms of width and height. Yeah. And it pumps out so many leaves. I mean, we've got probably about, I think there's about eight new leaves this year. So, you know, it really does put out some good growth. It's such a sturdy looking thing, isn't it? I yeah. know I've got a Djibouti at home that's not far off that size, but even so coming here, I've seen pictures of this before, I've seen it in your videos, but you don't quite realize just how big it is. Um, yeah. I mean, looking up, that top leaf there is, well, it's definitely over three meters high, easily, isn't it? Easily, So, which yeah. is probably an eight meters in max, or eight, eight meters in max, again, but, yeah. It's but definitely a big one. The base of that there, I mean, a palm like that now, you couldn't protect it anyway, if you, unless you went, you know, really ridiculous with scaffold poles yeah. and stuff. I guess once it gets to this size, they're tough enough for pretty much anything that UK weather can throw at them. Yeah, so this has not been protected for, for several years now. Yeah. When we first planted it, I did put like a, a sheet over it, like a perspex sheet over the top to keep yeah. the, the ice and the snow out of the crown. But to be honest, it probably didn't need it through those winters, just did it for... And one thing you were telling me, obviously you open your garden every year. Yeah. You have to chop off some of these older leaves off. Yeah, from... so I've got to chop the leaves off, which is, it's not ideal for the plant, but it's no. just a necessity to actually get through the paths. And... To open the garden and raise money for charity. Exactly, and do other... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, hopefully at some point when they really start shooting for the sky, yeah. the leaves can tower all the way around this area and we can walk underneath it without having to cut them back. And something you were telling me, I know these got reputation as being quite a slow growing palm, but yours, you said it's put out all these new intact leaves this summer. Yeah, every leaf you yeah. see that I've not cut back is from this spring onwards. So, Which is really incredible, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they do put out a lot of leaves. Once it's been in the ground a few yeah. years, then it grows quickly in terms of leaves. It doesn't yeah. grow quickly in terms of putting on the height yet, but it'll push out lots and lots of leaves. I think it is something with palms that we've, we've both sort of spoke about in our videos and looking around your garden, they can take a year or two to settle in yeah. and a lot of them, especially your know, Jabea is a really slow growing example, but once they are settled in, they start racing for the sky, yeah. don't they? And they do. This one's hopefully on its way now, isn't it? It's got to about its mature width, hasn't it? Or I getting think there. so, it's getting there. So hopefully in the next sort of five years, we'll really yeah. start seeing it lift, you that's know, and being able to walk underneath it. Definitely. And onto a plant that's more of a quick fix, shall we say? Colocasia yes. pink china. Colocasia pink china. It's definitely one of the plants of the last few years, hasn't it? Something that's been massively popular. Everyone wants it. And to me, this is why. You just you get these genuinely tropical looking leaves that spill out. It's great for filling a gap. It fits in with pretty much every exotic style plant, but you can leave it in the ground all winter. You can and, yes, you can leave it in the ground. And yes, in spring you think, what's that going to do? It's yeah. just little poking out little points, but then quickly. Unlike a lot of other colocasias, it quickly grows and then, you know, by midsummer, you've got a plant like this that sort of spills over the paths yeah. and has those large leaves. And one thing with these, do you find they grow better in full sun or shade or do you find it's quite an adaptable plant for... It's adaptable. I nearly think it... Your deck, by the way. <laughs> Look at that, see? Health and safety risk in British Garden. Now um, the NGS have gone, that's it, you don't care yeah. anymore, do you? <laughs> I think it's one that really, um, it benefits from full sun in the UK. Yeah. And it, Sometimes you see, it, yeah, you see yeah. advice on the internet saying you want it in shade or part shade. Yeah, that's more for when it's in the tropics and or really, really yeah. high when people are seeing over 35 degree temperatures. I mean, this year has been unusual because we've oh, had definitely, because yeah. we've had the real high temperatures. Yeah. We've had the odd plant or the odd leaf curling up when it got that yeah. hot in full sun. So the ones in shade looked a bit better then, but these are, you know, these are in full sun and these yeah. have done really well. Oh, so I'd always say, to me. I'd always say keep them in full sun for the biggest leaves. It's one of the things I often get people asking about gingers, whether you should grow them in full sun or not. And yeah. it's sort of the same thing in the tropics. So maybe on the continent with a bit more summer heat, they generally like a bit of shade, a bit of shelter from it. 
but I think here in the UK, if you prioritise a sunny spot, as long as it's got quite a bit of moisture, it really gets them going you know, earlier, doesn't it? Which is a big thing. Yeah, because the gingers are generally a lot slower to get going yeah. than, say, your canners and your dahlias and things. It wants that heat to get going, but yeah. you don't... Yeah, and if you want more flowers, you yeah. want it in more sun as well. Yeah, this year's really been an extreme, though, hasn't it? That's tested a lot. Definitely. So we'll just head through a bit more. We've got loads of amaranthus here. Yeah, which, so... Have you grown these from seed yourself, or...? These were probably, so, well, the original plants were probably sown about five years ago and these are yeah. just self-seeded every year and has come up where the ones. That's... I thinned them out a bit, so I've just left a few plants because it would be otherwise just a full bed of yeah, yeah. amaranthus. But this just keeps coming back. I don't have to keep sowing the seeds. I've, I've got to say, when I started my channel, I think the angle I went down was about easy plants, you know, easy tropical plants that you can grow that reliably create the effect. And this border definitely combines a good few with them. The way you've got the collocage of pink china, that stays in the ground all winter amaranthus you didn't even sow these from seed this year yeah. they've just popped up and the overall effect it's not in your face exotic but it definitely you know it helps complement the other exotic plants doesn't it like the big jubea there and all these other beauties down here yeah i mean the good thing about this bed here every single thing yeah. has been left out and yeah. it's just grown itself the only thing i've added this year is the tifonias which have gone pretty oh, crazily yeah. tall this year so they're sown from seed but the gingers the cannas the dahlias the begonias the leave out Colocasias, amaranthus, so it's, it is low maintenance this. Oh, I've not had to do anything other than water it. And this is something that we'll, we'll speak about earlier. I've not spent a huge amount of time actually planting in my garden or actually, we'll say, maintaining things this year, but things find a way. You, you soon learn which plants grow well without a lot of care, don't you? Um, and the overall effect to me, this is bright, it's colourful, it's something that people can easily grow at home, and there's not really any expensive plants in here either, are they? It's a good no. sort of budget option if you want some great filler plants exactly and it comes back year after year things yeah. self seed and obviously the dailies and canners they just come back year after year and get better and better definitely well let's head a bit further through because this is one of the areas that i was really keen to look at at your garden which is the more sort of arid desert style planting i mean this plant this is a real stunner here that's uh, so a yucca linearis is it that it one? is yeah so this is grown exceptionally well from quite a small plant with quite a small head of yeah. leaves and it's grown to a big sphere of leaves just over the last sort of four or five years i've got to say this and rostrata which is this one here i know you said this one's maybe not doing quite as well it's a group of plants that <laughs> when you see larger specimens of they cost a serious amount of money but yep. as much as i've shown some of those on my channel i'm a fan of planting small where you can plants like this yucca they really grow faster than you'd expect don't they so you can soon get something that's a you specimen can. plant we're talking three to five years which if you get into the hobby sounds like a lot of time doesn't it but in yeah. reality the time will soon pass and that now is it's easy sort of three four foot across yeah and it that really sunny i mean with some lights shining up that yeah that'll fit in with any kind of garden wouldn't it a really modern garden exotics like exactly. this exactly and plants like this you can plant them and forget about them yes you don't yes. need to wash them you don't really need to maintain them and you can forget about them. You might want to concentrate on your cannas and dahlias for yeah, a bit yeah. of colour and a bit of, you know, quick growth. Yeah. Whereas plants like the yuccas, they'll slowly build up and then yeah. you'll look one day and you think, actually, you've got a big specimen oh, plant yeah, here yeah. and it looks really good. And rather than spending, you know, £600 on a big one, you've yeah. got it for, say, £50 or so, planted it out yeah. and it's, it's done its thing. I mean, looking around here, there's just so many different types of plants. With my garden, I tend to have things grouped together. I've got like a very specific, you know, arid area and i think you've sort of done the same here but with the backdrop of the sort of lush growth haven't you um the, this border here this is some of my favorites and straight away agave montana yes that, that's an awesome thing isn't it? it yeah we've got a couple of specimens in this in this bed and these were planted as pretty small plants especially this one it was like it was no bigger than a, like your hands put together there like that and it's yeah. just grown big over the last sort of six seven years yeah the one there was a bit larger and that's it is still bigger now but it's not too much bigger than this one that was much much smaller so they've grown quick and they yeah. really filled out the space and they're sort of jostling for the space to be honest with the um american oh, yeah, yeah. as well and i think it really shows you're in yorkshire so in reality you're not much further north than me maybe just a bit across but yeah i know you get sort of 400 rainy days a year don't you something like that and <laughs> yeah, these are that, still yeah. thriving yeah, yeah they're yeah. still growing well i know you put a cover just overhead cover in winter but then the rest cover. of the year you leave them to it do you just leave them to it I put, yeah. I put the overhead cover on not really for the montanas but really yeah. for the americana which isn't quite as tough and which isn't as tough and actually tolerant. the one that was a, a gamble which is hiding behind those palm leaves yeah. which is la fanfa which i had no yes. idea how hard it's going to be yeah, yeah and that was a tiny little thing and now 
it's a good sized plant and yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a different form to the other types of uh, agaves we've got here. Definitely. And a palm that obviously likes it here in your garden, this for here. That, I mean, how long has that been in the ground? Because they're, they're known for being quite a slow grower, aren't they? Yeah. But that one's a real stunner. This was in a pot for many years. So yeah. I grew this in a pot from the old garden in quite a, like a tall silver pot. Yeah. So it had a, a good depth of roots in it when I planted it. And it was planted in 2015 or 2016. So it's been in about six or so years now. Yeah. And it was very wobbly when I planted it. It had hardly any had roots at the base yeah. where it attaches to the trunk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now it's stabilised and it's actually, you know, you, you don't look at it for a while, then you look at it and you think, that's yeah. got a decent sized trunk going on that now. I think it's one of those things with palms, that some of the, even the slow grown ones, they're not glacially slow. No. You, you do, you, you can't look at them every week, but like you say, every season when it comes to the back of the summer, you look at it and suddenly it's got seven new leaves, it's grown an extra few inches of trunk and over five years or so, that really adds up, doesn't it? It really does, because yeah, it was quite an inconsequential small palm really when I planted mm. it. But now it's it's a statement plant here and you can't miss it basically in this part of the garden. Definitely, it's a beauty. So let's head into the jungle. So this border here, it's a proper random mixture, isn't it, of all kinds of different plants. This is a bit of a random one. So this was meant to be a new start this season. So yeah. got rid of all the colocasias, or should have got rid of well, all the colocasias. Yes. But as you can see, we've got them all popping up everywhere, <laughs> the pink chinas. I thought I got rid of them all, but yeah. as you can see, there's quite a few left in and then made it more low maintenance so I don't yeah. have to water it at all. I've still got irrigation pipes in that I've used in previous years, but it's not been used, turned on this year. Yeah. And we've got agaves in again. And I've tried to think long term here and not plant too close together. Space them out. So yeah. they are spaced out. So yeah. this year I filled in with aeoniums yeah. in the gaps, filled in with these nice daisies as well for a bit of colour. Yeah, yeah. But if you actually look at the size of the agaves, look at this one yeah, down well, here. Yeah, well look at that one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's tiny, it's big as a hand, that's all it is. But eventually this will cover probably a third or Definitely. a half of this bed yeah. if it survives the winters. So, so looking back to this bed here, I think it's a good example of you know, leaving enough room for plants, isn't it? Yeah. This is how big Montana gets in, what, six, seven years yes. from that? So that's not a long time in the scheme of things, is it? And it's not gone from a, long a tiny little potted plant up to something that's... I'll try and put my hand next to it, but I can't really. But <laughs> it's definitely getting on for a metre across it's now, getting, isn't it? Yes, it's definitely, a, definitely. It's a beauty. And it's, like I said, it's gone from that size to that size in six years. That is really something. So let's head through. I know this is the sort of wilder end of your garden. Um, I'm intrigued because there's a lot of the plants I grow here, but some different variations of them, and they've really sort of been in the ground a few more years than mine. I mean, what's this palm for a start? So this is one of my rarities. Yes. This is Trachycarpus oreophyllus. I'll stand back so people can see it for a sense of scale. So I'll stand Look back where it is. So this has grown into quite a substantial trunking palm now, and it is yeah. different from other Trachycarpus. It's got different definitely. form Are you trying to leaves. persuade yourself there? <laughs> I am, yeah, 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 definitely. No, it's, it's definitely got a different look to the trunk, hasn't it? The trunk looks very nice, really tight fibers on it, and the actual leaves themselves, more of like a, a oh, true yeah. fan, basically. Yeah. quite fused at the base so i really like this palm and you just can't get this anywhere no. anymore so i mean at the moment it is surrounded by as you notice all these seedlings of my Chiskeia, which seeded about two or three years ago now so these will eventually come out and then it'll have some more space for this for yeah. the palm tree to really pick up the nutrients and grow them quicker so let's push through here a little bit. Push through all the princeps and hybrids and bananas and bamboos. Pe people want to know what you do when you're not doing your videos and this is the answer, isn't it? Your little swing set. Yeah, I've got a nice yeah. little swing set down yeah. here and a little climbing frame, which is yeah. always good fun to use. Definitely. Uh, so looking up here, these trees, obviously eucalyptus. I know you mentioned the one at the back there. Is it Regnans, that one? That is Regnans. Yeah. So apparently the tallest flowering plant in the world. Yes, I've, I've read that as well. So obviously not here in Yorkshire, but well, not in, yet, not, not yet, yet, but you know, it can get up to a hundred meters tall. So it's a long way to go. Yeah, definitely. And when it comes to eucalyptus trees for smaller gardens, then I'll zoom right in on the label. This is definitely a great shout of one to go for, isn't it? It is the uh, eucalyptus Porciflora debuvillii. Well, I'll wait for you to say that. To say it, it's one of those names that's right. yeah. a bit tricky, isn't it? But it's a cool looking tree. It is. Yeah. It is for smaller gardens, but as you can see, it does get to a decent height. But this is pretty much as tall as it's going to get, hopefully. Yeah, it's never yeah. become completely unmanageable. No, and no. It's, 
you're not just growing it because it's eucalyptus it's got amazing bark as well yeah i just love i love it. even in winter it looks yeah. bright even on a dull day like today it's a dull day it still looks pretty bright this bark yeah it's really really nice and i know it's one of those things it's not a native tree and a lot of people i know it's at the minute there's definitely a big push for planting more trees i personally think any tree is a you know, worthwhile addition to your garden yeah definitely. even something like this it's a habitat there's potentially nectar there during the winter for insects and things I think just having a tree just somewhere where the birds can live, it's definitely worth having in your garden. Yeah, I mean, there's flowers every year and the bees yeah. love the flowers. And you yeah. can see we've got all the, the seeds set oh, on, yeah, on can here see it as well. That's cool. So, and the birds do, they don't nest in it yet, but they're definitely perching it and roosting yeah. it overnight. Yeah, and it's night. shelter, I suppose, as well, yeah. isn't it? And obviously these are your tree ferns here. And I'm a big fan of this area because you've gone for that slightly more jungly style, which is what I've gone for myself with mine. Yeah, so we've got quite a, a number of tree fern Dixonia antarcticas here, and they do have drippers on them to keep them yeah. moist, and, but the leaves uh, have gone huge, and a lot of these leaves are the second year leaves because it was quite a mild winter. Yes. And I've left all the old, old fronds on yeah. so that we've got sort of a more natural look to this area and to these plants and they do naturally grow near eucalyptus trees as well oh definitely yeah, so yeah. that's why they're in this area i've got to say for me there's a distinction between what you might call like a tropical style garden where it's just bright colors and everything and then that more jungly exotic look and to me it just it just looks so natural you definitely feel like you could be somewhere else when you're at this end of the garden you've got the eucalyptus trees they just tower over you you've got the green fronds I mean, looking over here as well, that palm, that is really is a stun of that. The leaves are just massive, aren't they? Yeah, so that's, again, that's a Princeps hybrid. Got you. We've got about four or five in this sort of island bed here. Yeah. And then towering above that, we've got the Tetrapanax as well. So, I mean, to me, the first thing that comes to mind, when people plant these, you buy them as small potted plants, don't you? You get something that's in a 10 litre pot, something that's maybe that tall. Yeah. And you never really think just how big it's going to get. So when you look at these leaves here, if I put my hand against it, again, it doesn't really show, but that's over a metre across that Easily. leaf without even looking at the stalk, probably probably 1,200 mil, something like that. Yeah. So the whole plant has really got a big wingspan, maybe three and a half metres potentially, and the same for the tetrapanax. And to me, it's something I try to get across my videos. When you're planting these, it's not just for where they look, you know, that first summer where you've literally got one plant here, one plant there. You need to sort of think five years ahead at least, don't you? You what do. are these plants going to do and this is what they do isn't it this is what they do and, it, and it's an evolution so yeah these are quite established now but in another five ten years yeah. it'll, it'll be different again we'll be Definitely. able to you know the trunks will be well above our heads yeah. and they'll lose the well, lower my head, maybe not yours <laughs> you have, yeah and then we might plant something completely different through here we might yeah. have again a bit more color and bedding or we might go for something different because we'll be able to walk through this area and Definitely. see through it as well so i guess really with the whole exotic gardening thing i know a lot of people just like the look but for me it is about that journey as plants mature you put everything in the first year you get a sort of carpet display all these different colors different shapes different textures and everything things grow up then you get that interest of the height and then in a few years time you get extra plant opportunities around them you get that real canopy effect don't you and just stood under here with that rustling overhead it just transforms the feel of the place doesn't it definitely yeah Definitely. I mean, this area, like I said, it's the more wild, yeah. wilderness part of the garden. Definitely, one further yeah. away from the house, and this is yeah, yeah. in the jungle side. I, I do like it. And that's a butia. Is that odorata, that, that one? That is odorata. Yeah. So that's quite a good, chunky specimen that's properly starting to, to yeah. trunk now as well. Obviously, again, as with the oryphyllus just next to it, loads of these bamboo seedlings that will be uh, digging up and potting on. Yeah, yeah. Because we literally got thousands from the old mother plant that seeded itself. But at the minute, it does look pretty cool, doesn't it? It's just seen them all there lining the carpet, if you like. Yes, yes, definitely. And these bamboos over here. Now, the first question I asked you earlier, do you have any rhizome barrier or root barrier down? And you said no. No, but not in this area, no. I guess it's one of those things, as long as you're aware that it can be an issue. Yeah. I mean, I know you said out the front, you generally like to put a spade and just dig around them, don't you, every year, which is an option to control them. Yes. But even here, yeah, they've been left to do the thing. They've not completely taken over, have they? So, well, <laughs> you're looking at me now like they've they not taken yeah. over, but because it's in this part of the garden, yeah, you know, we're 50 meters away from yeah, the yeah. houses. It's not going to be an issue there. We're yeah. not near any paths or anything. We've got open fields to the back, so yeah. th it doesn't matter if these no. wander a bit. I mean, where we are now, it's obviously a bit of a play area. Yeah. We've got some bark and, and leaves down. We've got a bit of membrane under that as yes. well as a divider so the bamboo's not been coming through there so it's going to be sort of relatively restricted it's restricted yeah. it's happy there and 
if I water that area, it'll want to stay there. Yeah, that's it. I think a lot of people read some advice from you know hotter countries, so central USA, where any kind of heat there really gets bamboos going, doesn't it? Yeah. Even like the continent, you know, southern France, bamboos can get huge. But over here, they generally grow quite predictably, don't they? Unless you really feed them heavily. So you can sort of, I don't want to say they're definitely safe, but equally, they're not going to run rampant within a few years. It's definitely going to take the time and you'll sort of have an idea when it's going to happen, won't you? You do, but you have to keep on top of it. Because yeah. if you want to have that sort of specimen plant of a bamboo, yeah. you don't want it running everywhere. And over time, over five, ten years, or even yeah. if you have longer, then you might, it might start wandering around. I mean, there are some really bad culprits for this like the sasa bamboos yeah, which yeah. you wouldn't want to plant because no, they will go rampant I wouldn't from day those one anyway, definitely. but the the phyllostack is normally quite well behaved yeah we'll, we'll leave that there as <laughs> potentially sort of vague warning a vague, a vague <laughs> yeah. warning yes. yes so we'll just push through here i know you said you might be changing this area in the near future but let's just have a quick look around it now i mean you've got more of these are these all princeps hybrid these? these are princeps hybrids so yeah like i said there's four or five in this bed that really shows the leaf there doesn't beautiful it beautiful leaves here again even on a dull day they yeah. still look really really special uh, that definitely is one of my favorite sort of hardy palms i think to grow it's faster than fortunii it's got that cool look to the inside of the leaves you know in winter and dark nights when you go out with a torch you know like you do <laughs> it just really stands out it's it's such a cool plant i think you can buy them from hardy palms but there's maybe other places that do them nowadays i know certainly for my garden one of the palms i wouldn't be without that one definitely i mean i got mine as tiny little plants and yeah. they've grown really really well really really fast very hardy and as we've already mentioned look at the size of those leaves yeah they look cool and on about palms i think we've got another boot here tucked in here haven't we we have and this is one that's grown from a tiny plant from about 10 12 years ago which had no trunk at all it yeah. was just the leaves coming out of the ground and now it's a proper meaty plant i know we've got these tetrapanax yeah it's proper meaty yeah. down here it's uh tetrapanax are obscuring the trunk but it's got proper yeah. girth on it it's like that sort of size wise so well over you know about 50 centimeters wide at the base at least and it's pushing out proper size fronds that are well taller than us now. Yeah. I know this is a palm I get asked a lot about by viewers over in the USA because over there boot here is or in a lot of the US it's treated as a very hardy palm over here it's a bit on the edge isn't it yeah it, it, it to me the jubei is the the default cold hardy feather palm choice boot here it's somewhere near if we get a cold winter it's going to struggle isn't it like a very cold winter an exceptional winter but most of them I guess you don't protect it do you this has never been protected, no. this one. And this is seen, you know, minus seven, minus eight, something like that. And yes. This particular one has always been super healthy. It's never had spotting or anything like that. Yeah. And it's just grown really, really well. Nice. Definitely. So, yeah, I think, my, you know, you, you start getting worried. When you get to minus six, minus seven, you're yeah. thinking, mm, maybe I should protect to that. Or yeah. maybe it, it might suffer next year. I've never had spear pull on this one either. So no. it's always had new leaves coming out in spring and not sort of dropping off and just carried on growing throughout the year. So one of the questions I get asked about is when you start protecting your palms. And I think really, as a palm gets bigger, it definitely gets tougher, doesn't it? And once they get to this kind of size, they're settled in, they're established. For me, like minus seven about that is about my sort of limit when I start to think, should I put some fleece over it? But I suppose the other factor is the duration of the cold, isn't it? Because a dip to minus seven for one night, it's not gonna to touch a palm like this. No. But if it was minus seven every night for a few days and then ice days, it's potentially pushing it a bit, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's about the size of it. So yeah. It's literally the mass of the trunk and where the growing point is in that trunk. Yeah. If you've got a big trunk around the growing point, it takes a lot of yeah. cold, a lot of nights of cold to penetrate and get into the center and causing the damage. Yes, the leaves themselves, you might get a bit of wind burn, a frost burn, yeah. uh, slightly warmer temperatures, but still obviously minus yeah, yeah. five, Ma minus yeah. six, something. Milder, yeah. But it will, uh, that doesn't do it too much damage and it'll always no. part the new leaves in spring. And my sort of rule is if it's getting close to minus seven, but it's just one night, it's not worth protecting. Don't risk protecting it. Just leave it to it. It's not worth worrying about. That's my general rule anyway. But yeah, Definitely. I mean, the thing, the only thing I really worry about with yeah. palms like this is ice and snow can collect in the crown. Got you. Yes. So I do, not on this palm, but on some of the, like the Briar Marta, I don't want yeah. to lose that one now. So no. I will put fleece around the crown in winter before 
it's going to snow because yeah. I don't want ice packing in there for days at a time. No. So it doesn't generally get protected at all anymore, but it will get that fleece if we're going to get snowfall. Definitely. And again, there's more of the jungle planting, the big leaves creeping in. We've got the tetrapanax. I guess they're suckers, are they, from the they other big ones? They are suckers. I mean, this literally puts out hundreds of yeah. suckers a year. So I normally just uh, chop them down at base. But I've yeah. obviously missed a few here that have grown back since. But they don't look bad, do they? No, <laughs> they I mean, certainly fit in with them. These lot. have grown since the start of August because these weren't here a few weeks ago. I've got to say, I do like the view just looking across from here. I mean, careful where I stand on the decking, but that you've got such a nice mixture there with like the arid plants like the yucca linearis the rostrata the bright amaranthus and then the big jubea it's definitely a cool view and to me this sort of summarizes the mixture of plants that you grow it's exotic gardening isn't it essentially you don't have a tropic a strictly tropical theme but it's just a mixture of all the interesting plants from around the world exactly yeah like so that. it's not just jungle it's not just arid it's yeah. like you said it is the mixture and I do like the colour with the amaranth first and, and the ginger flower is still looking good Oh yeah, well. definitely. I'll just move across and show them that. That does look cool. But should we just pop around and I'll just show them this pink shiny from the other side. Because yeah, that, that has really grown. is a great advert for growing this plant. Look how well this plant has grown. So it's Colocasia pink china here in the UK. Just look at it. To me, that's as good as they get really, isn't it? They're just, well, yeah, they can this, essentially get a bit bigger. but They can get a bit bigger, but I mean, this group of pink chinas have been treated the same as all the others in the garden yeah. but in this particular spot they really love it and they just get really really big and they've still got that beautiful you know the pink pinkness on on the petioles in the stems here really looking good and the big again i use the phrase again big meaty sort of uh, tubers down that's there. the word of the day isn't it it is <laughs> it is coming from a vegan yeah. um but yeah it's just a really really good plant and it's yeah. hardy and this didn't get protected last winter it's just come back definitely it uh, looks really good now well thank you very much for showing me around personally i found it interesting to see you know the similar kinds of plants that i grow like i've got an arid style area but my montanas the babies are certainly nothing like as monstrous as those are just now here you've got the gingers like i grow you've got the colocasia but just seeing them grown really well they've obviously been in the ground a few well a fair few more years everything's settled in i guess over the years you find which plants grow well which ones don't and you, like you say you evolve the garden don't you to sort of suit it you find your favorites you try things some things don't work and it's all a journey isn't it i guess really of what works and what doesn't that brahia that silvery blue color i'm definitely a fan of that i can't wait till mine gets that big so i think now we're going to head inside aren't we or to the greenhouse maybe and answer some of the questions that people have sent in you guys so head over to chris's channel and watch the q a be George's Jungle Garden stroke Yorkshire Chris Q&A and we'll answer as many exotic style plants questions as we can do in about two hours this afternoon <laughs> so head over there I'll put a link to this in the video description thanks for watching it's been a great day here at Chris's Garden I'll see you next time